The Lumix S9 has an amazing trick up its sleeve where it allows you to bake looks straight into your footage at the press of a button. But how do we get there? What do you need to do to get your LUTs onto your Lumix S9? In this video, we're gonna go out and shoot a variety of situations to have a base for all of our LUTs. We'll then create the looks we want in DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro and then get these onto your Lumix S9. Now, if you already have a good base of clips to create your look from, jump to this timestamp here because you can skip this part. And the reason I wanna start off this video with going out and shooting some clips is because I wanna show how important it is to create LUTs for a variety of situations so that your LUTs can be as effective as possible for as many different scenarios as possible. Now, if you clicked on this video, I'm going to assume you know what a LUT is, but for those of you who don't know or aren't quite sure, a LUT is basically like a preset. A LUT tells which colors to turn into what colors. It may tell a blue to turn into a teal. It may tell a yellow to turn a bit more orange. Now, what I'm looking to shoot is a lot of variety. Like I said before, I want as many different scenarios as I can get. So I'm gonna go for three just to keep this video under or around 10 minutes. First up, we're gonna do a sunny exterior shot. Next, we're gonna go for a more gray and cloudy sort of day. So I guess more of a, a darker sort of shot. And thankfully, living in Manchester in the UK, it, uh, it rains just, just all the time. <laughs> and lastly, some interior shots. And those will kind of, well, they'll be like this actually. So this will be a pretty, pretty easy one to show you guys. Okay, we're back home now, so let's load up the clips onto my computer and get into DaVinci Resolve to create these LUTs. And just a quick side note, you don't have to use DaVinci Resolve to create LUTs. You can use Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro 10. I'll show you guys how to do it in Premiere Pro as well whilst we're going through this, but I don't have Final Cut, so sorry guys. With our clips in the timeline, I'm gonna go ahead and create a look for each clip that is unique that I'm happy with. A reason I love color correcting and color grading specifically in DaVinci Resolve is because of how easy it is. You can use an effect called Color Space Transform. You basically just tell DaVinci Resolve what log profile you recorded in, what camera you've used, and it immediately translates everything into a Rec. 709 profile so you don't have to do any sort of contrast manipulation or saturation addition and things like that. You have a nice, clean, image to work off of that is pretty close to real life. I find that sometimes it lacks a bit of saturation and a bit of contrast, but it gets you like 90% of the way there and just kind of gives you a jumping off point for color grading. For those of you who don't know, by the way, Rec. 709 is basically just a normal image, unless you're watching an HDR video, that's a different color space, but it's a color space for like TVs and what you're watching, which is probably on your phone right now or like your laptop and such. And you can get HDR displays, which like I said, are different color space, but Rec. 709 is like- What are you talking about? What are you talking about? So we grade to Rec. 709 to create a real life looking image. Well, let's get into creating a look. Now doing this in Premiere Pro is basically the same process. The only thing you're missing is a color space transform effect. Every manufacturer usually makes a log to Rec. 709 conversion log that is usually available on their website. Sony, for instance, I know have one, I've used it before for various cameras, and it basically gives you that jumping off point to then go and create your look, like I said before. So we're gonna take that as our base look in Premiere Pro and then go from there. All right, let's jump back to DaVinci Resolve real quick and export these as a LUT. And it's actually very easy to do. All you have to do here is in this little timeline section in the color page, right click on the clip and hit export LUT. Now it's very important that you export this as a 33 point cube because those are the ones that are most compatible. Then all you need to do is save it and give it a name. Now to do this in Premiere Pro, it's also very straightforward. All you have to do is go back to the top of the Lumetri color panel and hit the three lines and hit export LUT. Now to get this onto your camera, you'll need your SD card. If you don't have one that you've already been using with your camera, let's just say you just got a fresh S9, I'd recommend putting it into your camera and then formatting it just for compatibility's sake, rather than having to, you know, you do all this work to then put it in the camera and it's like, oh, it's not compatible or something like that. Next up, we're gonna put the SD card into our computer, or of course, if you're like me and you have a desktop, you could just connect the camera via USB-C. And now all we have to do is simply drag our LUT into the root folder of the SD card. It's really important 
you do not put it into a LUTs folder or whatever you want to call it on the SD card because when you put it on your S9, it will not see the LUTs. It has to be on the root folder. And now it's time to add this to our LUT library. Go to your menu and scroll down to LUTs library. Scroll down until you find an empty slot, click it and then hit load LUT. Next, you'll be taken to your LUTs on your SD card and you simply load up the one that you want. I do kind of wish you could load up multiple LUTs at the same time. Just say you want to populate the next 10 slots available with the next 10 LUTs that are available from the one that you click. I feel like that'd be pretty handy for someone who does have a lot of LUTs like me because I like to create new looks for myself to test out and for you guys as well. Which by the way, I have a whole store full of LUTs if you guys want to check out. It's the first link in the description below. But either way, you have to do it one at a time and you simply load each one that you want up and it will be in sequential order from how you loaded it. And now you are able to hit the nice LUT button and scroll through every single LUT that you have installed and instantly get that look that you're after in camera. You don't have to worry at all about color grading. Now before you click away, there's a few bonus things that you should bear in mind when it comes to using LUTs with the S9. The LUT button is indeed the easiest and quickest way to burn a LUT into your footage. However, if you feel like your LUT is coming on a bit strong, there's a way you can actually set the opacity of the LUT that you're using to then have a different look. And you can even combine two LUTs to get a completely unique look altogether. All you want to do is hit menu, click on photo style and scroll until you get to real time LUT. As I said, with this mode, you can blend two LUTs together and you can even do things like add grain, which is pretty cool because you can't put grain into a LUT. It doesn't, it doesn't translate, but this allows you to have more fine tuned control over your LUT strength in your camera, which I think is a pretty useful thing because there's a fair few of my LUTs in the store that are kind of strong and being able to tone them back a bit is very, very useful. Now here's an even cooler thing. You can edit raw photos in the Lumix S9. You can convert them from raw to JPEG and color them with your LUTs in the process. So you don't have to do anything with a stupid old laptop. You can just use your camera to edit, send it to your phone and post it to wherever you want to post it. If you go to the sixth category and go to the third page in settings, you'll have an option for raw processing. In here, you can throw on your LUTs, combine LUTs, change the opacity of your LUTs so they have varying strengths and add grain like we were able to for video. Then you can process the raw into a JPEG. And of course, using the really great Lumix Lab app, you can just send it straight to your phone and boom, you're posting it to Instagram. I think this has to be one of my favorite things and it's definitely going into my three month review of this camera is how much you can do with just the camera that is legitimately well thought out and well executed. Speaking of the Lumix Lab app, if you want to manage your LUTs more easily or even get your LUTs onto your phone so you can edit on your phone rather than doing it on the camera, you can do that as well. This is assuming you have LUTs on your camera. All you have to do is make sure your camera's Bluetooth is turned on, open the Lumix Lab app and hit transfer LUT. You'll get this interface and all you have to do is tap on the LUT that you want and you simply transfer it over as easily as that. So now you have the LUTs in app and you can do quick color grades if you're on the fly and maybe you don't wanna do it on the camera. I personally think I'll do it on the camera because you can't send RAWs over the Lumix Lab, you can only send JPEGs. And that is one little drawback, but you know, you can do it in the camera. So I'll probably just do it that way if I'm gonna do some photography. If you guys found this video useful, hit the like button so that the algorithm shares this video with people who will also find it useful. And if you haven't already, please hit subscribe because we are so close to two and a half thousand. And I've been meaning to say for a long time, by the way, guys, thank you. Thank you for 2000 subscribers. I was meant to do this whole celebration video, but honestly, I just got caught up in the, the grind you know, of like getting out videos constantly as well as like, you know, I've got a, I've got like a normal job as well outside of YouTube. And yeah, thank you so much. Seriously, I am all, all the engagement and actually interacting with you guys and helping people with the camera gear or the filmmaking techniques and also learning from you guys has been genuinely amazing. So it may seem like a small number in the grand scheme of things with like the Logan Pauls and Mr. Beasts of the world, but Genuinely to the 2,302 of you, I think it was an hour ago. Thank you so much for subscribing. I really do appreciate it. And in the meantime, if you guys are curious about what other superpowers that the S9 unlocks, check out this video here where I edited the entire YouTube video on my iPhone because I really wanted to prove a point about how you can not use a computer when using this camera. Um, I don't recommend doing that because it was a huge pain <laughs> to edit a whole video in CapCut. But I did it, and you can too.
you really want to. 